If you don't get this one thing right, it'll be almost impossible to build an affordable high-performance home. Welcome to the Affordable High-Performance Home Series. Howdy y'all, I'm Jordan Smith. I'm a design builder here in Austin, Texas, and we are trying to design and build an affordable high-performance home. And that first part, design, is crucial in order to build an affordable high-performance home. There are so many details that can only be done right if you design from the beginning for those details. Now, we talked about picking out the lot and we've done that for the affordable high-performance home series and now we are getting into designing the house. In this case, the homeowner already had a floor plan that she really liked. She wanted to use this floor plan. She had built a very similar one in the past and she knows that it works for her and her family. And because the lot is more of a residential lot, it's rectangular and it's facing the street, there's not a whole lot we could do from views or designing for sunrises and sunsets. It was sort of a boring lot and this is sort of a boring house but boring is affordable. So what we were trying to do is how can we design this to one, not be so boring, two, really incorporate those design features that add to high performance, and then three, spend a little bit more money in a few places to make the whole house feel higher end than what we're actually paying for. Let's look at the house as it was designed. So this is the final design of the house. Originally, we had this same floor plan, but the house plan that she just bought offline had a classic Texas H12 hip roof, which is not great. I mean, aesthetically, they're boring. They look like every other house that is out there. It's not historical. This is up north of Austin, so you have that hill country history with the limestone and a H12 hip roof just looks like everything in the suburbs, so it just wasn't cool. And then also, an H12 roof gives you a giant attic for no reason. Like, the, your utilities are higher because if you do it as a conditioned space, you've got this huge volume that's more air in that than you actually have in your house that you're having to heat or cool. Or, if you choose to do an unconditioned attic, now you just have this big wasted space of cold air or hot air that sits up there and makes your HVAC work harder as it's pushing hot or cold air through a space that is not conditioned. So we wanted to get rid of that first. So we did a classic gable roof, really nice, simple design, simple for two reasons. One, architecturally simple roofs are better roofs. If you look at any historic homes or high-end homes, you'll notice that they don't do all of the whiz-bang disjointed roof lines. They're very simple and they're very clean and it gives your eye something to fall on and it doesn't seem busy. The second reason simple's better is it's more affordable. The more cut up the roof, the more expensive it is to build. So it looks worse, in my humble opinion, but objectively, it looks worse. And also, it's more expensive to build, so why do it? We went with a simple gable design, and it gives it this nice farmhouse look. It's up there north of Austin, next to the limestone quarry, so we decided to clad it with limestone, and it just feels like something that could have been built in 1880, could have been built in 1980, it could have been built in 2024. It just feels like a very timeless design. The other thing that we did from a design standpoint is because we had these porches on the front and the back, we pulled these porches out. The original roof didn't come out over these porches. We put these porches on that allows us to see the sunrise. So it's low enough here that we're able to see the sunrise through these big sliding glass doors. That was the part that I said we spent a little bit of money. That's a big 12 foot door that opens up and you can see through it from the inside in the summertime when it's nice, you can open it up, have indoor outdoor space, but that's where the sunrise is gonna be. And you see that sun coming up. And then after about 10 o'clock or so, depending on what time of year, it goes over that porch. And when it goes over the porch, now you're in shade. So you're not taxing your house with sun coming right through the windows. We're making sure that we're shading our windows, especially over here on the west side, 
All of these windows are in shade. The bedrooms are open. We talked about doing awnings. We decided against it. We'll get into windows later. The Anderson windows have a really nice coating on them that doesn't have so much solar heat gain. But where we could, we covered it up so that as the sun comes down during the heat of the day, we're protected. And then at night, as the sun is setting in the evening, you've got this great sunset view. So even though it was a bought plan, we were able to tweak it just a little bit to maximize the views of the sunrise and sunset, simplify the roof, make it much easier to build, and also we're able to have a conditioned attic with exterior insulation over the attic as well as the walls. And all of that happened because we designed it to be that way from the beginning. I don't have time to get into all of the details on what changed, but just in general, you can think about like, well, if I make my wall thicker because I have insulation, I have to change the way that my foundation details are so that my stone sits on a stone ledge, we have an air gap, and then we have foam. I've got to make that brick ledge wider, or I have to expand the size of my room so the thicker wall doesn't come in and encroach on the size of my rooms. That's just one example of a detail, but every detail has to be gone through and thought about because if you design it to be high performance, it's easy to build it high performance without adding a lot of cost. You're adding more material maybe, but you're not having to reinvent the wheel and figure out these clever solutions because you've designed it from the beginning to be high performance. And that's just a couple of the design details that we thought of in a myriad of design details that we did to this house plan to modify it for high performance. Which begs the question, is it better to start with a house plan and modify it for a high performance home? Or is it better to start from a blank sheet of paper? They both have their pros and cons. Pros of buying a house plan is it's quick, you know what you're wanting, there's a set price and you can buy it and you have it. Modifying that can get expensive because you're having to work around all of the design decisions that were made in a vacuum, right? They're not your decisions, they're just already there. But it seems like an easier path. I argue that it's better to start from a blank sheet of paper because it'll give you what you want from the beginning and you're not having to make as many compromises. The pitfalls with designing from the beginning is that people want all kinds of stuff when it's in a vacuum. There's no budget consideration. So they'll go crazy and the size of the house gets too big and we want a sauna and we want all of this stuff. And then you get the budget back and you're like, well, we can't afford that. And now you spend all this money for a house you can't afford. So either way can be done to make a high performance home. The challenge on both of these is to make a high performance home that is affordable. And that's what the rest of this series will look at is how we made the decisions we made to make a high performance home while keeping it affordable. So make sure that you subscribe so you can see that and all the other great episodes coming up. Comment below on whether you would start from a house plan and modify or whether it's better just to start from a blank sheet of paper and have an architect or a designer design it from scratch. Thanks so much for watching and join us next time as we endeavor to build better.